Ligue 1. We have our Ligue 1 expert uh, and Jonathan Johnson. <laughs> so why would we not uh, push some of the other leagues around the world further down to make sure that we get all of the juice squeezed out of this one? JJ, what's the uh, mood in Paris right now around, uh, around uh, Pochettino? Uh, hugely frustrated. Uh, the football that PSG are playing is not good, not good at all, as we saw against City in midweek. Uh, and, you know, the feeling is that it's really just sort of a temporary truce uh, between Pochettino and PSG, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, I don't think anyone's convinced that Pochettino and PSG is really going to last that much longer. Sure, they might get to the end of the season. It seems, uh, you know, to be the the angle that PSG are pushing at the moment. Uh, but I, I don't think PSG are going to win anything major uh, of note. And that's with all due respect to the Ligue 1 title, which at the beginning of every season, we expect PSG to be dominating anyway. Uh, because, you know, I just don't see uh, how Pochettino is suddenly going to magically, uh, you know, develop some sort of identity, uh, you know, and stamp his mark on this team between now and the end of the season. You know, he, he looks lost, for want of a better word, on the touchline uh, and uh, tactically as well. Well, don't you think he's probably starting uh, with uh, Renick, uh, starting to build a little tactical plan for his new club, spending more of his time uh, <laughs> on the phone working through those things? I mean, I don't think that's far from from reality, to be honest, where he's like, well, I could spend my time trying to fix this problem I can't fix or maybe look to the future uh, and see what happens in the summer. Let's switch over to 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 Lille with Jonathan David, a little CONCACAF chat Uh Jimmy, I'll, I'll start with you. Obviously, this is a player who only uh, Erling Holland has scored more goals in uh, for two thousands born players uh, in this season. Uh, obviously, highest scorer in the league, I believe, right now, and has more than half of his his team's goals. Jimmy, I mean, for a player like that, I mean, how big is that one for Concacaf? But two to solidify himself uh, as one of the top strikers in the league. When we talk about you know the hundred to hundred plus million transfers, he's a player that's going to be pushing that limit. Uh, do you see him making a move uh, sooner than later? I do. I'm curious what JJ ultimately thinks. But what I also found is another stat that you didn't mention is that in the calendar year of 2021, Jonathan David has as many goals as Kylian Mbappe, which I think is pretty tremendous and, and something worth talking about for sure. I heard Inter Milan is interested in him. And I'm sure there's some other clubs that are interested as well. Why wouldn't they be? But he's been fantastic. And obviously, this is going through a transition from a manager that helped them win the league last year and Christophe Galtier to somebody different. And they really struggled. But despite that, he's still finding a way to score goals. And I really think that's a testament not only to him, but to the, to the players that are supplying him uh, with the service uh, and, and, and the opportunities. But there is something about that. And, and also, with regard to Canada, really quick to go into the CONCACAF stuff, he didn't even start against Mexico, Jonathan David. They went with Kyle Laren instead, and Jonathan David came off the bench. I mean, that just speaks to Canada's depth, and that kind of scares me, and we can get into that when we do our preview yeah. stuff. But with regard to Jonathan David in particular, I think he can do so many different things. I love his energy and his attitude. Even if things aren't going right, he's still trying to do the little details that I think is going to what separates him from everybody else. That he can – he's thinking about he's sniffing around, looking for those half chances that maybe he can turn into goals – and as long as he doesn't lose that, he's going to have a fantastic career. And obviously, he's off to a great start. Yeah, J JJ, my, my question for you is, like, how biased are we? John Herbin talks about that humility that Jimmy just talked about with Jonathan David. How biased are we from here in North America of just wanting this player to succeed or actually putting this player on a category of potentially a, a global star in terms of his ability to score goals? Because his track record of scoring goals is pretty incredible. And you talk about the fact that he lost some of his players from last season at Lille and he's continuing. It took him a few months to really settle into the club. I think three months before he scored his first goal. And now here he is, you know, considered one of one of one of the rising stars and still pretty young. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think you alluded to it there. Uh, you know, there was that expectation when he arrived, and I think it did crush him at first. You know, he was seen as like the the new hope uh, for for North American soccer coming to Lille. Uh, you know, joining the club at a similar time to, to Timothy Weyer, who obviously is another major uh, major hope for for USMNT uh, moving forward as well. Uh, but. You know, I think he's he's taken to Lil uh, like a duck to water. You know, since he got off the mark, uh, you know, after a couple of difficult early months, he's really, really grown into that role. And I think the the difference between this season and last season is he doesn't have Burak Yilmaz doing his crazy sort of, you know, career reinvention, Indian summer, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, where he's banging in goals from like 50 yards out at 35 years of age. That has gone now. You know, Lille can't rely on that anymore to, to get these uh, to get these results that fired them to the title. So now David is performing consistently, uh, you know, finding the back of the net with regularity. Uh, and, you know, I, I 
I do feel that he is definitely one of the most uh, exciting attackers in European uh, soccer at the moment. I think it's a really positive thing for Lille uh, to be, obviously, to be a French club, but uh, but to have the ability to to not have minimum fee release clauses written into players' contracts because that way they can set the price for David. Uh, and I think that they will be really loath to separate with him in January at a cut price because I think that they will be able to extract a big, big fee for him next summer. Uh, and I think as well, uh, you know, if he has another consistent season or continues um, on his current trajectory, you know, he's probably going to hit around maybe 20 goals, which is a very, very good return in Ligue 1. You know, it's quite a defensive league. It's difficult to be prolific, despite what many people would have you believe. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, he is... Uh, he, he's definitely going to be one to watch uh, in the in the coming transfer window, and I, I think that can only bode well for for Canada and for the for North American soccer in general. Having someone who is getting close to that level of being a, a real recognized star. JJ, I've got a question on on Conrad De La Fuente and, and Timo Weah, but first, what do you think? What do you think Jonathan David goes for in terms of a transfer fee? If you had to just throw a number out there, I'd say around seventy five to eighty wow. million euros. Wow. wow. I mean, by by far a record. Uh, Probably around, similar you know, to the the fee that we saw Nicola Pepe go to Arsenal for. Wow, fair enough. And so uh, Timo Weah, this is and Conrad De La Fuente. We could speak of them in the, in the same vein. We've seen inconsistent performances at times in the national team where they come in, they don't look quite there. And I'm assuming they suffer from the same because Timo Weah is constantly in and out of the lineup over the last couple of seasons uh, at, at Lille. Conrad De La Fuente also showing glimpses of brilliance, but still lacking a, a, a huge sort of sample size of first team football at the highest level. What is the sort of impression of those players in, in Liga? I mean, obviously, I know Tim Weah uh, from his time at PSG as well. And I'd say that one thing that held him back earlier in his career was maybe this hesitation between whether he was going to be a wide forward or whether he was going to play through the middle. Uh, I think recently he's had more problems physically than anything else. So it's it's hampered his ability to really settle in and, and deliver for Lille. When he gets a good run of games, you know, he is performing quite well. Uh, you know, he does chip in uh, and pull his weight. Uh, but also at the same time, uh, you know, the the team is kind of built around um, around Jonathan David at this moment in time with that dynamic. So it's only natural that he's there, you know, getting more of the opportunities and, and finishing those off. But, you know, if Weah takes the chances that come his way, particularly at the beginning of next year, when you've got the domestic cup action coming in, uh, you know, I, I think that he could definitely have a, a role to play for Lille. And then we'll see what happens, uh, you know, heading into the summer where pretty much anybody at Lille is for sale. So we could see, you know, both Dave, uh, Jonathan David and Weah on the move at the same time. Uh, on Conrad De La Fuente, uh, you know, he was very, very exciting when he came off the, the bench for his first, uh, you know, couple of tastes of Ligue 1 action with Marseille. Uh, I, I feel like his confidence took a major beating when he missed that chance against PSG a couple of uh, weeks back in the Classic. Uh, you know, had a great opportunity, fluffed his lines and, and since then has kind of drawn back into himself a little bit uh it's a shame and i'd like to see more of him uh over the coming uh over the coming months but also at the same time marseille is not an easy place to be right now they seem to be embroiled in all of this kind of scandal you know the the unsavory fan scenes uh week after week which the league are working hard to try and stamp out uh whether or not they're doing enough, you know, we'll have to wait and see what kind of sanctions they take against Lyon uh, at the beginning of December. But for De La Fuente, uh, you know, I think it's uh, it, it's been a bit of a bumpy start to life, but there's definitely things to to, to be encouraged by. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't be too harsh on him. I just think it's a real shame that he didn't take that chance against PSG because as soon as you score in a match like that, you instantly write yourself into Marseille or PSG folklore. <laughs> 